Well, the performance pillar for me is, it's almost like the call to action for taking it to the next level. I think one thing that Oceania has always been very good at is uh, the grassroots development and the social responsibility aspects of the game. Um, you know, we have beautiful programs like Just Play that are rolled out all around the Pacific and there is a big emphasis on providing opportunities uh, for women and girls. But one area which I really think should be a focal point, and it is now because of the strategy, is really taking the actual football up to the next level. And for me, that's what the performance pillar is all about. Uh, and now that we've increased the number of slots in the Women's World Cup, it's even more important because, you know, one of our island nations has an opportunity now to play on that bigger stage. And I think it's important that every athlete is given the best possible chance to perform at the highest level. Uh, and, and that's what this pillar is all about. It's super exciting. Well, I think first of all, uh, being a New Zealander myself, uh, is just the very fact that it's coming into our region. Uh, I think it's, it's amazing for Oceania that this mega event is going to be played on our shores. We're gonna see the biggest stars of the world uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of fans coming across. Um, it's it's such a spectacle. And honestly, I don't think that New Zealanders quite realise how big the Women's World Cup is. Um, so I'm excited for them to see it, to see how huge it is, but also for the impact that that's going to have. You know, I can already see uh, so many more women and girls actually picking up some boots and trying it out, wanting to participate, wanting to take part. So for me, it's it's about the fact it's coming home, it's coming to our region. We get to showcase who we are as a people, our culture, how welcoming we are, how amazing we are, how beautiful New Zealand and Australia is, but also the showcase of women's football. You know, women's football is an incredible sport. It's beautiful. It deserves to be at the highest level on the biggest stage. Um, and everyone in New Zealand and Australia and around the world are going to see that. Well, I think uh, having a, a clear strategy in place is something that really helps. Um, I know that uh, New Zealand football have got a kind of a top to bottom plan around the women's game itself. I also know that they are going to make a big effort around leveraging this event to elevate the status of women's football. But I think it's about it's about really creating role models. It's about pushing uh, the New Zealand, you know, the football ferns, making them role models, uh, letting young girls actually have access to them and to see what is possible. There are some amazing stories um, with some of the top Kiwi players, you know, playing professionally overseas. Some of the feats that they've accomplished are incredible. And I think we need to tell those stories uh, and, and get those incredible athletes in front of young girls and women in New Zealand and elevate them, make them role models. You know, they are playing for their country on the biggest stage. You know, it's the same for me as what we see in the All Blacks. They should be household names as well. They should be role models. Um, and, and we need to use this World Cup to push that and, and to really increase awareness and popularity of the game. Oh, it's so exciting. For the first time ever, uh, a second Oceania team will have an opportunity to qualify for a World Cup. And that is a massive, massive deal. Um, you know, there's, there is a gap, we have to admit it, between New Zealand uh, and the rest of our 11 OFC countries. Um, so it's always been a struggle for other Oceania teams to, to qualify for these major FIFA tournaments. So now with the expansion of the slots, we have 32 teams now at the Women's World Cup. There is an opportunity through this playoff tournament for another Oceania team to join our host New Zealand at the World Cup. And for me, that is just, I mean, as a player, as an athlete, as a young football you know, enthusiasts, that's the dream, right? That is the absolute dream. Everyone wants to be at the World Cup representing their country. So 
yeah, I think it's really ignited uh, a lot of momentum in the region. There's a lot of excitement. Uh, I've seen a real stirring of activity. The launch of the OFC Women's Football Strategy has come at the perfect time. So yeah, all the ingredients are coming together. Now we just need to see the hard work. I think the strategy is what is needed to prioritize the women's game. I think everyone knows and everyone understands that we need to do more for women's football. But what the strategy does is actually sets out a plan. Um, it prioritizes certain areas and it offers uh, a guide basically for everyone. And the good thing about it is that it was launched with the full endorsement of, you know, the president, all the executives, the general secretaries, the member associations, the public. So, you know, everyone is accountable now uh, and they should use this strategy as a living document to continually check and monitor. Are we doing a good job? Are we on track? Do we need to regroup? Um, it should be a living document and it is. And, and yeah, it's definitely a step in the right direction. Um, and with the Women's World Cup coming, there's no better time to leverage that momentum. My career isn't so star-studded as I would have liked it to be, but I uh, I consider myself very, very fortunate. Um, I grew up in Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, from a very young age, I had access to playing football uh, through school. I was also uh, involved in many clubs in Auckland, and there was always a clear pathway for me uh, where I could join, I could play, I had a coach, we had access to a field, equipment, facilities. Um, so I consider myself very privileged uh, growing up in that environment. Uh, something I've learned, um, especially since I've joined FIFA, is that that simple access to football is not existing in many, many places around the world. We still have some member associations where young girls aren't even allowed to step foot onto a pitch. You know, so yeah, I do consider uh, my upbringing and sport in general to be, to be very uh, privileged. Um, and then <laughs> later in life, when I moved to Samoa, um, I was also very lucky to be selected to play on the women's national team there. Um, which obviously was a huge uh, honour for me, you know, to be able to play for your country and to wear that flag on your chest is, is such an amazing honour. Um, but uh, we played very, very, very uh, infrequently. And that's one of the big challenges and uh, one of the things that excites me about the performance pillar is that it's about also increasing the frequency of competitions. Because one of the big challenges in Oceania, and it's not just in the Pacific, is that the World Cup, it happens once every four years. So Oceania would have a qualifier for that event once every four years. And it would be one centralized tournament where all the countries would come together. Um, New Zealand would normally always win. <laughs> and then what would happen is for the 10 other island teams, including Samoa, was that the team would disband and there would be no more activity for the next, you know, four years until the next round of qualifiers. Um, and if we know that national teams being active, a constant process being in place is something that drives the whole pathway underneath, we have to make sure that the national teams are playing on a regular basis. Because when the team is playing, the whole pathway underneath the team is ignited, everything. So one of the things that I've seen, which is changing, and it certainly will change with this new strategy, is getting the national teams playing more regular international football um, and introducing new competitions like the OFC Champions League for Women. Um, those things are really important because if we're not having our athletes playing at the highest level regularly, you know, we can't develop underneath those athletes. So. Yeah, for me, that's something I've seen change. You know, it was awesome to be able to play for Samoa, but, you know, we, I, I can't even think that I played more than five matches, to be honest. So now I see that young women who are able to, you know, make it to national team level, they'll get a chance to play so much more often, which is really cool. I 
I think uh, I think for me, it's just elevating uh, women's football as a priority amongst all the people who are in decision-making positions. You know, there was a time 10 years ago when I joined uh, football as an administrator, women's football was not a priority. It was something that was given um, lip service, I would say. You know, it's something that people kind of did it as a, a as a social responsibility. They didn't see it as something serious that should be prioritised or invested in. Um, and I guess what I'm proud of is that we now see, um, and we've seen this clearly through the launch of the, the OFC strategy, that it is a top priority and the top decision makers are making it a priority. You know, the OFC executive committee, our FIFA council members from the OFC region, all the presidents from the 11 member associations, everyone's on board. Uh, and that is a huge change for me because when you have support at the highest level and you're trying to boost the game, it makes all the difference. Um, and with a little friendly pressure as well from FIFA and, and OFC, you know, it's something I think is really important. So I'm proud at the position that women's football is now. I think we've elevated it to the level where it should be in terms of priority. And the strategy is perfect now to take it to that next level and, and with some concrete plans to see how we can actually boost it and the Women's World Cup, which is gonna just give it this massive momentum. So all the ingredients are there now, uh, and I just can see women's football in Oceania just going completely to the next level. I can't wait. It's so important. Uh, women have to be represented at every level of our game and having them in the decision-making bodies is absolutely crucial. I think not only to the success of women's football, but to football in general. You know, it's widely known that having a diverse decision-making body with people of different genders and different backgrounds actually leads to a better decision-making process. And what women bring to the table in those discussions and at that level is it's a different view, a different approach. You know, we're able to think a little bit outside of the box. Uh, football is a male dominated sport. Traditionally, it's been heavily, heavily male dominated. We're starting to see that change, but we need to normalize it. You know, we shouldn't be celebrating every time a woman makes it into a committee or gets elected as a president or a CEO. That should be a normal thing that happens. And I'm happy every time I see it happen, but I want it to be normalized. Um, and Johanna Wood is a beautiful example of a woman who is doing an incredible job um, in a position of power. Um, and she is someone that really embodies what it means to empower others. Um, and I've really seen her do that actively in OFC uh, and in New Zealand. She's using her position um, to support other women to progress in the sport. And for me, that's, that's incredible. So we need more Johannes for sure.